Welcome to another Warframe video. In this one, I'm going to show you seven things that you need to know in Warframe. And the first thing I want to start to talk about is Lith Relics or Relics in general. I say Lith Relics just because most of my comments on my videos with Relics are about Lith Relics and they're about if they're vaulted or not, where they can try to farm them, and of course with frames and weapons and all that type of stuff, if they can farm them and where. And usually my response to most of those is that it's vaulted because if you're commenting, you're probably a beginner and second you haven't gotten it yet which likely means it's vaulted however that's not always the case uh, but one of the recent ones i believe was someone was asking where to farm ember now in order to do this without asking me you can always ask me i'm always going to answer if we type in ember here to the void relic area on your ship you'll see there's relics that come up but if we click on one and for the pc you have to hit tab i don't know what it is for xbox or PlayStation. It says if it's in the vault or it would show the sources, the drop sources of where this relic is at. Uh, for example, this one is in the prime vault, as you can see. But if we go and search for Wisp that just came out, let's say all of these I didn't have, so they would all show up like this one. You would just hit tab and then it's going to show you all the drop sources. And then we know for sure with this that it's available to get. Now, I just typed in Bronco Prime Barrel just to kind of show that there can be a fluctuation. For example, with the Meso Z4, if we hit tab, this one's in the Prime Vault, and I'm sure we can find one, like this one, Axie W3, which is what we just looked at. This one has the Prime Barrel. There are some that could be vaulted and not vaulted with the same item, like I just showed with the Bronco Prime Barrel. A lot of this are with mostly weapons, and of course, Forma. I don't think you have to look up Forma. Please don't. There's no reason to. Then the next few that I'm going to look at, the next three, they're all going to be associated with the chat or with typing or anything else like that. The first one that I want to show is the clan or the dojo key. This is very important for Warframe, especially starting new. If you're a veteran, you should already have this so you can skip this section of the video. If you go to the recruiting tab in the chat area, if you don't have it, you can just go to options, go to social and then put it on. However, you should already have it on. And when you go to options and you hover over recruiting, go to social. When you go to recruiting tab, it just says it right there, recruit for a squad or a clan. But there are going to be some people who look for a squad or look for a clan and then some people who are going to offer you to join the clan and what the whole clan's about, what they have and everything. For example, you're going to want one that has 100% research. Try to see if that clan or ask that person who invited you to the clan if they have 100% research because you want the dojos involved in the clan as well as the training posts. And then of course, when you join a clan, you'll get a dojo key, craft it, and then you're able to go through the dojo. Now going off of that is the trade chat. Now one thing that I actually just recently learned is this, this is the filter system. Now obviously, as you can see, nothing's showing up right now when the trade chat usually is blowing up. Uh, that's because I have it filtered for only people saying they want to buy something. This is gonna be very helpful, especially with the video I did on making platinum, where you can make 15 platinum pretty easily if you just sit here and look at the trade chat. Sounds boring, but I've done it a few times and very quickly I find something that I need. And now with this filter system, it's very, very quick. Uh, a lot quicker than I showed in the video specifically about making platinum. Now the way that you can filter stuff is just to get rid of this, just to show. If we wanted to do want to sell, it doesn't have to be capitalized. It doesn't matter. It's always going to lowercase it and then just default to it being capital or lowercase. We're only going to get people saying they want to sell now. But if we change it back to what we want and what most people probably want, it's just going to go right back to want to buy. Want to buy moves a lot slower than want to sell, obviously. So you can have both on, of course. And if you're not interested in the want to trade for or want to trade, you can just filter it to want to buy and want to sell. And then you're not going to see those ones. So that's the first tip with the trade chat. The second one is basically what I explained in the other video, and that's you have to farm. Uh, just going with relics and everything, when you have a bunch of relics, and there's one that you have left 15 lith relics and you don't need anything from it you just need to get rid of it it is good to do so because with a lot of my vaulted items that i have with blueprints or parts or anything most of them are from other people do the public missions especially doing the exterminates or the captures because those ones are very very quick even the rescue missions those are always just super quick missions that you can easily just open a relic and then choose from the other three squad mates that you have and then hopefully they have something better than you uh, if you get really unlucky you all get commons it's like the bratton the burst and the two formas but once you farm them then you can really look at the one two buys and say oh look i have this part i have an excess of it because i've just done relic runs over and over again uh, that's just the name of warframe it's farming everything's farming everything takes time in this game now moving on from that 
If we go to the market and we go to Warframes, and let's go to Goss. You go to the blueprint and you hover over it, it's gonna tell you how to get Goss. Just a very quick summary, a small summary of how to get Goss. But it, the bad thing about this is it says a disruption mission, but you don't know how long you have to stay in the disruption mission. So that's the downfall with these. Uh, but if you don't wanna look up a video and you wanna do it yourself, this is just a very small summary of where and how to get Goss. Now, of course, like I just said, you're gonna have to know which wave to last to in order to get any of the parts. And if we go to some of the frames that you have to do assassination missions for, for example, Frost, you hover over the blueprint, it's gonna say nothing. Again, go to Necros, hover over the blueprint, it's gonna say nothing. You have to defeat the assassination target in order to get their parts. Those are usually pretty easy to find. You should go through the whole star chart anyway, so you're gonna end up finding which boss drops what, they are always gonna drop a part for a frame. Just then you're gonna figure out which one. And of course there are some that are in the dojo. This one is in the Tenno Dojo and it tells you right there, as well as Banshee. So if you go up to Banshee, this one's in the Tenno Lab Dojo. So the ones that are in the dojo, you can already see by looking at this. And then of course, Ash, Corpus Railjack, Defense Missions, it tells you. But then of course you're gonna have to see how long do you have to be in it, everything else like that. So that's just very, a quick summary that might save you some time where if you don't need to look it up or if you see that something doesn't have a description, you know it's on an assassination mission. Now going off of these and into the assassination missions, there's one thing that I wanna point out. And before I point that out, I hope everybody's at this part of the video. Right here, I wanna explain that all of this is a probability. Now, if you're not new to Warframe, you already know that. But if you are, or even if you just don't know, uh, everything's a probability. When I say hey, do this assassination mission and you're bad out of luck, with doing you know, five missions and you got it once, or you got it zero times for the neural sensor at Themesto, which is one of my most popular ones. The other person might've got five out of five or four out of five with their runs. So it's just, it always differs. That's why with a lot of my comments under any farming video for the rare resources, there's somebody who says, this was horrible, I got nothing. Are you sure this still works? And then there are people that said, this worked out great, thank you. A lot of this uh, just really is me weighing out pros and cons when I do those videos. And to say in this video is that the assassination missions give a higher probability for those rare resources, as well as having a shorter amount of time to get it. For example, if you do a survival mission, you're gonna have to go to extraction at least at five minutes. And then to get there, you know, 20 minutes or 20 seconds so maybe five minutes 20 seconds for a whole mission to just get one neural sensor maybe you get lucky and you get more but that's again probability where if you do the mesto you can take two minutes uh, three minutes if you're just new and it's a little bit difficult for you and you come back and you get one and you do it again in six minutes and you get two and of course after the five minutes with a survival you can leave at any time but with the, the mesto mission is just very simple very easy and really quick, especially if you're high in the game, any assassination mission is going to be quick for you. And you have that high chance of getting that neural sensor or, for example, on series, you have a two for one chance of getting an organ cell. There's two enemies, two bosses. You can get two organ cells. And of course, it's also a probability. And for me, it doesn't take that long, maybe three minutes, uh, just because the other guy just takes so long to finally become vulnerable. The next thing I want to show, which is the last of the seven that I have listed in the title, there is also going to be a bonus one that I'm going to briefly describe after this one. So stick around for that. Now I go to this next one, it's going to be at the Strata Relay on Earth. And once you get here, go to Fast Travel, go to Seven Samaris. And this tip is basically going to help you if you, like me, were an idiot and may have sold some frames or you may have sold some parts of a frame specifically from a quest. So if you go over here to the offerings, if you scroll down a bit, you're going to see a lot of blueprints and a lot of parts and even some mods here. And all of these are from quests. These are only attainable through quests and they're a one-time deal uh, until you figure out that they're here uh, like I did. I figured this out not that long ago and it's very helpful. If you sold it, you were a beginner and you thought maybe I need to sell some frames so I could get some space because I've already used it and then you can't get that frame again. You could go here, do some of the missions for him. They give about 25, 20,000 a piece. Uh, I've had to do four runs maybe just to get the three parts for Mirage. So they give close to 20,000 and I did have a leftover amount to spare. So it doesn't take that long. They all, they reset in 24 hours. So you're gonna have to wait a day 
to then do another mission so it would take maybe four days to just get three parts now the one bonus thing i wanted to show which i had on this list originally then i moved it off the list because i thought maybe i talk about this too much uh, but it is the syndicates i have my own video that is just dedicated to syndicates and talking about syndicates but the one thing that i want to mention in this video is that it's very very needed i would say for beginners especially when you can get some mods early on you can get some parts you can get some relics early on as well and then the mission is super easy and they also are very helpful for leveling you up making your master rank go up adding experience or affinity whatever they call it to that as well and then once you get to the the higher level which is rank four i believe is when you can get all the warframe mods and these are specific to a warframe of course and not one syndicate has all mods or all frames uh, for example this one has Saren, but if we go to arbors of hexus and we type in Saren, they don't have any so they all are going to have different ones so in order to get all of them you're either going to have to buy the ones that you don't have or like i'm trying to do complete everything in the syndicate and then you can finally join another one and then get the mods for those other frames but that's all i wanted to say about that i think they're very important for the game as i mentioned in the video and i will have that video linked in the description now that is the end of the video i hope you enjoyed if you thought some of these were stupid or some of these were something that you had no clue about and now you're finding out and it's very helpful uh, let me know either way they help me with making videos in the future and how i should talk about things and what i should include now, i try to be a bit descriptive and a lot of these categories a lot of these tips that i showed just because i'm not so sure the type of audience that i'm getting i have had people complain about me talking but i try to talk just so i can make sure that there's no needed questions or no added questions that aren't really easy to describe in a comment that people may get confused by so i hope i always clear everything up right then and there unfortunately it makes for a longer video for you to watch and listen to sorry about that but if you just need the, the tip quickly you can ignore my voice that's fine as well but with all that said thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed